welcome you all to one more session in frontiers in cfd today we are going to discuss about the current number in detail how it is used in cfd simulation the importance of current number and the formula for current number that we are going to study these are the basic objectives for today's session the cfl condition how this to select the time step of cfd simulation so the basic thing regarding the current number is current frederick and levy stability criterion called as the cfl number this number especially used in transient cfd analysis and it is quite commonly known as the current number a simple definition of this is how far across the cell fluid moves in a given time step here delta t is your time step delta x is the distance which has been covered by the fluid in a given time step delta t where u is the velocity for a fluid the current number is a non dimensional number so if you just check out the dimension it is a nine dimensional number and it has been named after richard coren so basically this is used in computational fluid dynamic simulation to evaluate the time step requirement of a transient cfd simulation as i discussed earlier it is used in transient cfd simulation and whatever the mesh we are selecting or whatever the mesh we are generating is linked to your current number and based upon that the stability of the numerical schemes are been determined the stability requirement of time integration scheme can be defined using current frederick levy condition which names after richard current kurt frederick and hans levy so current frederick and levy stability criterion so the current number is the ratio of two length that is the fluid distance and the cell distance as uh, defined earlier a fraction of cell that the flow moves across the given time step to the cell distance basically this is for one dimensional flow here u delta t divided by delta x so whenever there is a flow which is taking place in only one direction in this in that case this equation is applicable whereas for multi dimensional flow we need to consider the velocities we need to consider the distances in respective direction say for example if it is a two dimension so we need to take into consideration the distance delta x in both of the direction as well as the velocity as well as the time steps so this is for multi dimensional problem so in this case uh, we say it will be the summation of ui delta d that is velocity in a respective direction and your distance cell distance in a given direction as you know when we have a computational domain we have the nodes and element so each cell corresponds to the nodes and element and based upon that whatever the distance we are having between the two nodes and element so accordingly this the current number is been defined so in cfd simulation current number indicates how far across the cell the fluid moves in a given time step now what should be the value of current number the value of current number it can greater than 1 it can be less than 1 so what happens if it is greater than 1 so if the current number value is greater than 1 it means that the fluid which is moving in a in a given cross section in a given computational domain so it has been moved in one or more cell so that means it results to the instability and you might see while running the simulation divergence in the velocity field so these are the simple ways to understand if the value goes from greater than 1 there will be instability and you it is likely that you are not getting the physical results so this is not suitable for solving the cfd simulation so the image which is been shown over here there are can be two conditions when it is cfl number which is greater than 1 and second one cfl number less than 1 in first of the condition what you observed that the flow moves in one or more cell 
at a given time step. So this doesn't happen when the CFL number is less than one. So what our condition should be? We should try to maintain CFL number which is less than one. That is for getting your accurate result or more meaningful results. Now the physical time is discretized using time step and the time step has two main implications. Uh, first one it is related to the stability of time discretization scheme. Second one related to physical meaning of time step. Now what is the CFL condition? The most, the most, uh, most, uh, most important thing is the stability requirement. So when we are running the CFD simulation, we might have observed explicit, implicit and then semi-implicit. So there could not have been the semi-implicit in most of the CFD solvers, but in almost all you might observe explicit as well as the implicit. Now what this explicit and implicit are, we'll discuss this. So in explicit scheme, the solution at time step n plus 1 is calculated using known value of solution at time n. Okay, so this is known value of solution at time n. So this is for your explicit scheme. Now we'll come to understand this more in detail in next few slides where how the current number if it is less than 1 or if it is greater than 1. So that times we'll be able to understand what is this explicit and implicit. So next one is the implicit. So in an implicit scheme, the solution at time n plus 1 is calculated using unknown value of solution at time n plus 1. So earlier in explicit scheme, it is a known value. Here it is unknown value. Now next thing is semi-implicit scheme. The semi-implicit scheme uses both solution at time n and n plus 1. So this is how the explicit and implicit it goes with the variation. So in order to converge the explicit and semi-implicit scheme, the time step need to be carefully selected. Otherwise, the simulation might lead to the non-physical results or you might have observed the velocity field is diverge. So these are things that can happen. The stability requirement of time integration scheme can be defined using the current Frederick Levy stability condition. Now let's see what the stability condition is. So CFL condition is expressed in terms of the current number. Say as I discussed earlier, the current number can be less than one, it can be greater than one over here. So if it is less than C max, so that is the maximum value of current number during the performing iterations. It can be with the help of whatever the CFD solver you are using. So if the C max varies depends on the type of integration scheme, but it generally equal to one or less than one. So what we required is the value to be less than one. And uh, whenever you are generating any kind of mesh, the things has to be remembered is the value should be made less than one in order to solve this particular without having any kind of errors or problems of current number at the same time to obtain the physical and meaningful results. The thing that has to be maintained is the value to be less than one. So the above condition relates to the physical implication that the flow should not travel over more than one grid cell during the given time step. So when we are selecting the mesh size, it has to be selected properly and based upon whatever mesh size you are selected, accordingly your time step has to be selected. So there is a relation between this step to prevent the problem of current number that can happen while running the CFD simulation. Most of the times what may happen we might have reached to somewhere higher number of iterations. Say for example, if you reach to somewhere around 50,000 or 1 lakhs or 2 lakhs of iteration and after the end of 2 lakh iteration, we come with a problem of current number. So if the problem occurs after that many numbers of iteration, so we might not be in position to further solve it. And that's why it is very important how you are selecting the mesh size. Whenever you are selecting the mesh size, or whenever we are generating the mesh, try to select the time step according to how you have generated the mesh. So this is very important and this parameter should be made less than one in order to get more meaningful physical results. So this is one important thing while running the simulation so that after performing many iterations like one lakh or two lakh, so you might not be in unfortunate situation of 
the errors which are related to your current number so this is one thing that has to be remembered so if it is a 3d computational domain so accordingly also whatever the sale size you have you must select the base upon that the time step has to be selected so that every time whenever this calculations are gone the value should be less than 1 now is the condition that the value is always less than 1 not necessarily the value can goes more than 1 also in some situation but uh, for this we need to understand few things that will be in the further slides so in many application the cfd condition implies that the time step should be very small and if the time step we are taking is very small it will be the long process of iteration at the same time it is a costly process of cfd simulation so this is one of the thing which uh, we can say some disadvantage uh, the time requirement is called quite higher as well as you might have to in invest too much on uh, we can say the basic infrastructure which is required for your cfd simulation now the that here comes the semi implicit and implicit in a, in the previous slides we have discussed more about having a current number which is less than 1 or maintaining a current number which is less than 1 so as to uh, get a more physical or meaningful results but here is what we have is that the semi implicit and implicit scheme elevates such a strict cfd condition allowing the use of time step where the current number is higher than 1 so what I said earlier, it is not necessary that we always have to maintain a current number which is less than 1. But in some situation, we can have a current number which is higher than 1. But again, there is a limit uh, that it should not exceed in large areas of computational domain. So even if at certain situation, uh, this is the condition you might have observed with while running the CFD simulation also. With many softwares, you might have observed some messages coming in like uh, the velocity field is diverged at a particular domain or cell in the domain and but uh, when you are performing this long iterations you might observe that this uh, you can say the indication which has been there or message has been there it does disappears over the period of time so uh, what has to be remembered is the limit should not exceed in large areas of computational domain if it is limited to the particular areas of computational domain in that case whatever the implicit or semi implicit scheme even if your current number goes greater than one still you are uh, you can we can say get some result but it should not exceed in large areas of computational domain if it exceeds in large area of computational domain it definitely will leads to the incorrect result so even if in some situation if it is greater than one and this uh, limit is limited to a particular area of computational domain we are likely to get some better result but it should not uh, we can say exit in the large areas of computational domain this has to be remembered so as a current number is related to local mesh size as well as the time step attention is always required on your mesh quality so in general the cells with higher skewness can create unnecessary stringent time step requirement so this is also one of the important thing uh, whatever the mesh size you are selected it has to be carefully selected while you are running the cfd simulation now there are few uh, few cfd solvers which adopts uh, implicit time scheme solver and uh, we say they are quite uh, intrinsically stable hence the cfd sim, uh, condi cfl condition is not necessarily uh, as a as a necessary condition for the stability uh, again but uh, it is not the thing that if it is uh, we say we will arbitrarily select the mesh side but here also we need to uh, we say the mesh size should be properly selected as well as the time step which you are selecting according to whatever the mesh has been generated which should have to be carefully done so the choice of mesh size and time step should be studied based upon the problem to be solved means as i said earlier whatever the computational domain you are having whatever the dimensions of your computational domain are there so based upon that computational domain you must specify the time step according to whatever the mesh size you have generated so whatever the distance between the two cell you may if you are using the ANSYS as a uh, we can say a solver CFD solver in that case you always check out the number of nodes and element whatever the distance between the nodes and element and 
see you know your dimensions of your geometry whatever it may be a 3d geometry or so so based upon that whatever number of nodes and elements are being generated accordingly you must uh, select the time step so that will be helpful in order to maintain uh, better accuracy with the result so how to select the time step of cfd simulation so from the physical point of view the time step indicates the smallest unit of time we wish to resolve in cfd simulation and therefore it should be selected it should be selected in such a way that the physics of interest solve in a given time it the the flow should not uh, move in more than one or two cells even if it is there it should be limited so then only we are likely to get better results with the help of your cfd solver so uh, what any flow structure that changes faster than a time step will not represent it in cfd simulation the characteristics time steps of the problem depends on the number of factors that includes the following first one as i said uh, whatever the geometry size you are having then whatever the boundary conditions you are applying as well as the flow characteristics so every time we are identifying the physical time step for the problem is really a challenging one because it consumes uh, so much of time uh, we need to understand the dimensions of the object uh, a computational domain first and then how many uh, number of nodes and elements are been available and that's that's why this task become challenging a, a thorough knowledge of the, uh, the given computational domain is required Uh, in order to select a better time step for a given cfd simulation if the problem has intrinsic quality quantity like rotations of geometrical parts or time varying boundary condition so we might be going to make a subdivision of characteristic time that can be used as a reference so if it is a 3d computational domain you may uh, check out either it is a length as there or if you are having diameter and some other parameters try to uh, consider a small element of that and accordingly try to uh, select a pro proper and suitable time step for a given cfd simulation so another way to estimate the required time step can be optimized using the characteristic geometry size and the characteristic velocity of the flow typically the inlet velocity so in some situation if the inlet velocities are been known so this is a way by which uh, we can say select a suitable time step the ratio of length over the velocity gives an indication of time required for the flow to cover a distance equals characteristic length and such time could be divided into smaller unit to define a given time step so if you are dividing your computational domain into into number of nodes and element so that will be an understanding what are the dimensions of your computational domain so based upon that we can surely define the proper time step for your cfd simulation that will results in the better result without having any uh, problems of current number which is more than uh, one or sometimes you might observe uh, the global current number reaches to the value of 250 or so that is quite predominantly observed in ansys uh, simulation so what to <clears throat> what we can conclude out of this is uh, Uh, the summary is to avoid the problem of current number the best thing which we can do is identify your computational domain what mesh size you have identify that check out the element size you are having and based upon the element size uh, the mesh has been generated accordingly try to uh, we can say uh, we can say find out the value of current number or select the time step in such a way that the value of current number will always be less than 1 so the condition should be whenever you are putting uh, all such conditions of time step and whatever the cell distance you are having the value should always be less than 1 uh, and that will be preferably will be useful for us in order to have a better results with the your cfd simulation so uh, the thing which we can always do is changing the size of mesh even if sometime you are run the simulation for longer number of iterations and you got the problem of current number the best way uh, to start with that simulation is again change the size of mesh and uh, try to run the simulation again so this is one thing which can be done uh, when we are uh, facing the problem of current number in the cfd simulation